Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L&M. Superior taste. Superior filter. America's best filter tip cigarette. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> You'll wait and see me. Yeah, I thought maybe I could buy you a beer, Kitty. Well, on a hot day like this, that'd go pretty good. You sit still, Matt. I'll get it. All right. Where's Chester? Oh, he was hanging around down at Moss Grimmix. I brought a pitcher full for you, just in case. Ah, uh, thank you. <sighs> Dog days, Matt. Get days like this, I wish I was back in Kansas City. Ah, uh, just as bad there. Well, at least there's something happening to keep your mind off it. Mr. Dillon, quick, come here. Well, what is it, Chester? There's an elephant out here in the street. Oh, oh, all right, Chester. An uh, elephant right here on the plaza. I could use an elephant in the street today, man. You ought to see it, Mr. Dillon, doing tricks and everything. Chester, will you get in out of the sun? He's gone. <laughs> you know, Chester sees things even on a good day. <laughs> Oh, hey, uh, Matt, uh, you in here? Yeah, Doc, I'm in here. Yeah, uh, that sun's so bright out there, I can hardly see you, Matt. Well, I'm in here, Doc. Yeah. Now, what do you want? Well, I thought as Marsh around here, you'd be interested in knowing that there's a elephant out in the street. Yeah, so I hear. <laughs> but it's true, Matt. It's really true. Well, I can't stand it any longer. <laughs> well, neither can I, Kitty. All right, Doc, what's it really all about? Hey, you'll see, Matt. You'll see. <laughs> Oh. Well, I'll be. By golly, you're right, Doc. There is an elephant out here. Yeah, he's advertising the circus. There, see him, Mr. Dillon, right over there. See him? See him? See him there? Yes, I see him. Come on. I, I can't hardly wait, Mr. Dillon. That man with Jenny there give me this handbill. Jenny? Uh, yeah, that's the elephant, Jenny. Oh. Yeah, let me see the handbill. Bannock's Grand International Circus and Menagerie. Bannock? The show's going to be here tomorrow, Mr. Dillon. Two o'clock. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, but Mr. Dillon, we... Hey, mister. I'd like to talk to you. Me? Uh-huh. Oh, oh, it's the law. Now, Jenny, salute the marshal. Trunk up. That's the girl. Yeah, that's very fine. Very good. I'm Jim Conger, Marshal. Maybe you heard of me. I used to be billed as a human fly. I could climb anything, anywhere. But I got too old for it. Now I'm the best bull man there is. Mr. Conger, are you with the Bannock Show? Yes, sir. Now you're planning to play here in Dodge? Yep, tomorrow. Parade at 10, show at 2. Of course, uh, no tickets needed for the law. You have to have a permit to play in Dodge. You know? Uh, we know that, Marshal. You wasn't in your office when I came looking for one. Mr. Conger, I'm responsible for the peace in Dodge City, and I'm not going to sign a permit for this circus to play here. Well, why is that, Marshal? You know as well as I do why. For what happened in Hayes City and a few other towns where that show is played. I don't want any riots here in Dodge. Oh, you know about them things? Two people were killed in Hayes, weren't they? Well, I reckon so, but, Marshal, that don't say it happened here. I can't take that chance. 
Now, you go on back to your boss and you tell him that I won't let you play Dodge. Oh, I, I can't do that, Marshal. Why not? Uh, she wouldn't listen to me. She's a strong woman. She? Yeah. Maggie Bannock. She's my wife, Maggie is. Now, she used to be known as Dainty Margarita, the strongest woman in the world. Well, Marshal, she could lift five men at one time when she was younger. Look, Mr. Conner. Well, I, 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 I'd rather not have to tell her what you said. All right, Mr. Conger, you show me where I can find Maggie Bannock, and I'll tell her. You know, Mr. Dillon, when I was back in Texas and the weather got extra dry and it was hot and... People begun getting on each other's touch bones more than usual. You know what happened? No, what? Well, sir, just when it seemed like everything else had gone wrong, the circus had come to town. Oh? Chester, what are you trying to say? <clears throat> well, uh, back in Texas, after the circus had came and went, everything was different. It was? Oh, yes, sir. Somehow it didn't seem near so hot nor so dry, and you even forgot what you was fighting with your friends about. That's the way it worked in Texas, huh? Uh, Yes, sir, it did. Chester, I know it's been hot, and Dodge has been pretty dull, but this particular circus isn't going to help any. Oh, why? Because there's trouble connected with this show. What kind of trouble? I don't really know, Chester, but two people got killed over in Hayes, and there's been trouble in other places. Yes, sir. They are down to the creek. Oh, Mr. Dillon, just look at that string of wagons, will you? With uh-huh. Hey, looks to me like one of them is stuck in the creek bed. Now, come on, let's get down there. Dillon from Dodge City. Glad to know you, Dillon. You look like that other team we've been needing to move this wagon. You'll oblige, won't you? Oh, uh, sure. How about four staff there? <laughs> Chester? <laughs> sure. Come on, give us a hand. Oh, yeah. Mr. Dillon, you see what's in that wagon? Oh, don't let that lion worry you. That's old terrible Tom. He hasn't got a tooth in his head. Say, what are you, Dillon? A marshal? Yes, ma'am, that's right. Boy? We made the big time. I told you we would. Come on, Marshal. Let's get that poor old cat out of that water. All right, ma'am. Come on, Chester. All right, Lamb. Wait that horses now. I got it, Maggie. Come on, boys. Get your shoulders into it. All right, now. Whip her up, Lamb. Here we go. Do it. We can, ma'am. Chester, let me have that corner, huh? Oh, that old lion sure is watching me. Yeah, he'll be more help where you can't see him. Get over there. That's it. All right, Maggie. Here we go again. Ah, uh, come on up. But I guess you can't help being what you are. Thanks. Maggie. You aren't leaving Dodge, are you? We're going to put on a show there tomorrow. Now that's what I came to talk to you about. Well, then talk. Maggie, you can't bring your show to Dodge City. Say, you are a big-time marshal, aren't you? Your performance in Hayes left two people dead. They came looking for trouble, and they got it, Marshal. Now, get out of my way. I'm heading for Dodge. Who started the trouble, Maggie? I told you who started it. Over in Kinsley, too. And Atchison. 
Seems like trouble follows your show, Maggie. Now, why? You got a big badge on you, Marshal. Why don't you figure it out for yourself? Let's go, boys! Maggie, you're not gonna play dodge. All right, Marshal. We won't play dodge. Does that make you feel better? Move out, man! Seems like an awful determined lady, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Well, I guess you have to be to run a circus, Chester. All right, come on, let's get back to town. Yes, sir. in this morning, and I just ain't got the heart to wake him to this parade. I swear he's going to have a conniption fit when he sees that lady's plan to go ahead at her circus. Well, that ought to wake him up because nothing else does. Good morning, Kitty. And Chester, where's the killjoy this morning? You mean Matt? Chester says he's still sleeping. Sleeping? With this parade going by under his nose? Oh, and ain't it fine, Doc? Ain't it just fine? You look like three grubby little kids. Hey, well, Mr. Dillon, I didn't know you was up. When did this start, Chester? Oh, about 15 minutes ago. Jenny just went by with a big sign on her back saying circus at 2 o'clock. Why didn't you come and wake me up? Well, I just don't know, Mr. Dillon. You kind of go to pieces around a circus, don't you, Chester? Well, most people do, Matt. It looks to me like it didn't scare that circus owner too bad, Matt. And I don't mind admitting that I'm glad. I've enjoyed a little innocent entertainment for change. Innocent? Doc, if this circus takes place, all the entertainment you're going to get will be mending heads. Oh, Matt. Look at all the people on the street. Word spread all over the county. I bet people come from miles around for this. Why would they make trouble? I don't know, Kitty, but there must be something that sets them off. It's happened too many times. Dog, look at that clown. Well, he's jumping right under the heels of them horses. <laughs> yes, yeah, Jessica, but look what's on the horses. Ever seen anything like that in Pete Tice before? Oh, my. Oh, do you like circus, Doc? Oh, my. Well, I do, and you should, too. It's good red-blooded fun. Oh, look at those Pete Tice. You man. <laughs> Doc, I have to admit there's something mighty fine about hearing the music and seeing those animals and the clowns. Are you sure everything. it's the clowns, Matt? Look at that man, Mr. Dillon. He's standing on four horses at one time. I'm going to try that. Hey, you have enough trouble with one horse. Oh, well, I declare I feel like I could do it, Miss Kitty. They are, Matt. You see, there's the magic of the circus. Ah, a country boy like Chester can suddenly ride four horses. And whatever he ever does or not, doesn't make any difference at all. Yeah, sure, Doc. Now, you're going to take that away from the hard-working people of this county? Doc, I like a circus as much as anybody. Well, then prove it. Don't try to stop it. You're not changing my mind. No, stubborn, that's what you are. I may be. Uh, the way I see it, Matt, you will have a riot on your hands if you do stop it. Mr. Dillon, look, coming around the corner. Ms. Bannock riding a big white horse. Did you... Oh, oh, look in there what she's got. Yeah. yeah. She's carrying... A Confederate flag. Uh, so that's it. That's where the trouble starts. Well, what are you going to do, Matt? Good morning, Marshal Dillon. It's a kind circus, isn't it? Hold up, Maggie. I want to talk to you. I said, hold up. Let go of that bridle, Marshal. There's no law that says we can't have the circus outside the town limits. That's not what's bothering me now, Maggie. That flag. Ah! bothers the law, don't it? That's not what I mean. This flag is all I got left, Marshal. My sons died holding it high. Since then, I swore I'd hold it for them. No Yankee yet has told me I had to burn it. Are you going to? I'm not telling you to burn it. I'm just saying you shouldn't parade it through Kansas. I do what I want, Marshal, whether it's Dodge City, Kansas, or Atlanta, Georgia. Let go of that bridle. All right. 
But if you keep showing that flag, I can't be responsible for what happens to you or your men. We take care of ourselves, Marshal. What are you going to do about it, Mr. Dillon? Hope I'm wrong, Chester. It's about all I can do right now. Another hour and a circus will be starting, Matt. Yeah. Well, there's one thing in your favor, Matt. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Doc. What is it? Yeah, we've been in the Long Branch almost an hour, and I, I don't think more than 10 or 12 men have been in for a drink. Well, that'll help some. Where's Chester? Oh, I imagine he's watering the elephant by now. <laughs> Matt, why don't you deputize 10 or 15 men and take them out there to the circus? Stop the trouble before it starts. I thought of that, Kitty, but it won't work. Well, why not? Do I put guns in the hands of 15 Yankees or 15 Southerners? Oh. Hey, boys. Last chance to work your whistle before yeah, the I see. I'm ready. Hey, Barkey. Hey, Barkey. Hey, Barkey. How about some service here? We're in a hurry. We got something to do, ain't we, boys? You stay here, Kitty. I'll talk to him. Yeah. Hey, boys, look at you. Circus lover himself. <laughs> Baxter, I want to know why you're dressed that way. This little old Confederate coat, Marshal. What do you care? I've never seen you wear any part of your uniform before. Ain't had reason to wear it since the war ended. Then why today? Why ain't you heard? This is my passport to the circus. All us Johnny Rebs. Maggie lets us in free as long as we got a piece of the old uniform on. A piece of uniform and a gun. Is that your ticket to the circus? Marshal, you're making a big thing out of this. We just come in for some drinks. The long branch is closed, Baxter. Since when? Since just now. Your boys have had enough to drink. Just drinking our way out to the circus, Marshal. You ain't going to try to kill that one, too, are you? And what is that supposed to mean? Why, the whole town knows how you tried to keep the circus from playing. People are saying you're stepping outside your duties, Marshal. Ain't that right, boy? Yeah. You're saying it too, Baxter. Yeah, I'm saying it too. Only difference is I'm saying it this way. <laughs> now, does anybody else want to try me? Get him, boys. He's just another dang old Yankee. Come on. <laughs> Next man that makes a move, I'll shoot him in my leg. All right, start walking, all of you. Walking? Where to? Jail. Marshal, you can't lock us up. We're going to the circus. No, you're not. You're going to jail. For what? We ain't done nothing. Doc, these men look drunk to me. What do you think? Never seen anything worse. What are you talking about? All right, you men. The doctor says you're drunk. Now start walking. Hey, Jenny, you want a piece of this apple? There, you hear that, Jenny? That was my music for my climbing act back in the old days. Yes, sir, I'd go in there and climb that center pole faster than any man in the business. Oh, Jenny, you're the only woman I ever loved outside of Maggie. Here, have some more apple, huh? Come on. Hey, Jim. What? Oh, howdy, Marshal. Didn't know anyone was around. Suppose you heard me talking to Jenny here. Yeah, I heard you, Jim. Gee, you probably think I'm kind of crazy. Huh? No, I don't, Jim. Look, I need your help. That crowd's getting mean in there, and I gotta slow them down. I know, Marshal. He hangs that flag off the top of that center pole, and then they fight the war all over again. Uh, maybe if Maggie had had sons in the war, she would have let it end proper like. What? Well, she told me her sons died defending that flag. No, 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 Marshal. We never had no children. We always wanted some. And when the war came along, Maggie went in as a nurse. She saw a lot of the boys die, and each one was just like her own. And she just never got over it. Yeah, so that's it. But what can I do, Marshal? This thing has got to stop. I tried to tell Maggie, but she just won't listen to me. Well, I'll tell you what you can do, Jim. You can find me six men that think the way you do and have them meet me by the main tent right away. Now, do you 
men understand what I want you to do? Yeah, they got it, Marshal. They cut the rope when you give the word. That car's getting meaner every minute. Yeah. All right, then you men go on before it's too late. Uh, what do you want me to do, Mr. Young? You just follow me and do what I tell you. Where are you going? In there. All right. I'll go too, Marshal. Well, that's the start of it. Come on, Chester. stationed around outside this tent. If any man leaves his seat before the show's over, I'll have him cut the ropes and drop the tent. Don't let him buffalo you. He wouldn't dare. Maggie, I will if you make me. It's that flag up there that's causing all this trouble. I'm going to bring it down. No, Jim! You'll fall! Mr. Dillon, Mr. Dillon, look at him climb that pole. Jim! Jim! Don't try it! Jim, please! Please, Jim, you can't climb no more! I'm going to Look here, Maggie. I, I got it. I got your flag, Maggie. The war, the war's over. Oh, you fell, Mr. Dillon. Stand back, Chester. Hey, you take it easy, Jim. It's all right now. Jim. Oh, Jim. Oh, my poor Jim. Why did you try? Maggie, darling, I, I had to. You wouldn't let the, the war end. But I will, Jim. Don't die. I will, I promise. I'll never put the flag up again, Jim. Maggie, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I... Maggie. I lost... The last of my boys, Marshal. Jim was the last of them. Would you lay him out gently? Yes, ma'am. Chester. And Marshal, you can bury the flag with him. Smoke under the direction of Norman MacDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Parley Bear is Chester, Georgia Ellis is Kitty, and Howard McNair is Doc. Gunsmoke has been selected by the Armed Forces Radio Service to be heard by our troops overseas. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke. <laughs>